We haven't done an after hours since last September. Last wow. September? Wow. Holy cow. How many comments on Reddit, et cetera, do we have? Uh, dozens and dozens and dozens. <laughs> dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens. On after hours. <laughs> Instagram. Instagram? Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, because we never start with Instagram. You know, bitches be gramming. <laughs> Remember that girl with the doll? Yes. Yeah. She sent us this. I mean, this goes as far back as when the Halloween show. Holy. Holy. Uh, today is a special day. I have saved up the YouTube event of the year for this evening, the Box Mac Halloween special. To celebrate, I've made myself some mini macaroni and cheese. Sorry, Frankie and John, I like mine baked. For those of you who haven't discovered Box Mac yet, please do check out Max Research Theater 3000. And uh, yeah, she does that miniature doll photography. How nice! That's yeah. really. She continues to be a good promoter for our brand. Yeah. Yeah. And also made cute little mac and cheese. Yes. Yeah, li yeah, miniature mac and cheese. Mini mac and cheese. Um, here, here's here's a, a fan named Cheesecake Goth mm -hmm. who uh, <laughs> bought one of our shirts and ran herself through a filter. Yes. Yes. Very much so. She says Sundays are for Box Mac and my new Box Mac shirt. I'm a craft original kind of girl. There you go. I'm wondering, like, when will this, like, filter thing... Like, when will this be considered, like, like a relic of the past? Like, aim. Do you think she picked the butterflies because they're the most noodle-like? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I do think she butterfly. meant to match the <laughs> Yeah, there is something to it. I actually kind of <laughs> like the butterflies. I know yeah. it's just a filter. We also got tagged on... Uh, uh, Heather Ann Holly, Heather Holly, of course, is a fan of ours. Yep. Uh, she went to a mac and cheese festival in, I festival. think, the festival. The festival. To go to the festival, the kings, and it'd be a festival. She's Canadian, so um, it's called the mac and cheese festival dot com. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, that's pretty like. Let's see where it is. The original thing. It's in Woodbine Park, Toronto. Oh. Eclect Atlas put together some kind of a barbecue with some yep. mac and cheese. They said no breadcrumbs here in the ATL, the East Atlanta. That's the way to go. Yeah, no well, breadcrumbs. Get them out of there. And finally, here's some here's some here's something interesting. I like <laughs> this. This is really cute. Uh, somebody drew an a, a skinny anime junt. <laughs> Look, I, I like that it's skinny, I like that it's anime. <laughs> what more could I want? All good things. This is from Starlea. I finished the request for Dazzlin Dawson. Please go check them out. They make amazing edits. And by the way, this is John from Red Cow Entertainment. So what they're referring to is this Dazzlin Dawson person mm -hmm. is also a fan of ours. And they make these little edits, these like After Effects edits. Yep. And they made one dedicated to you and me. Now, really? I haven't, I haven't seen this. Yeah, this is, this is just true weirdness. Thinking immediately. Oh, you guys, it's kind of hard to read. Thinking immediately of uh, you guys. This is madness. This is, How weird is that? This is insanity. That's basically it. Talk, talk about like a media format that we would never like. It's almost as they took like random a num number generator and put a bunch of clips into it like does, yeah. uh, a nap or With something. Like, like a style that's completely diff disparate from our own. <laughs> they, they said, hands down, one of the best friendships on YouTube.com. John and Frankie, I apologize for the shit quality. Instagram's video service isn't the best. And it lowered my high res to standard res. Shake my head. And I like the funky music. Dazzle and Dawson also was clearly watching 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And said, uh, for those who wanted the fullish version of the Lint song from my story last night, LMAO, I also posted yesterday, so check that out if you haven't. He must have been like out at a social event telling people about the Lint song from 10 Pounds. <laughs> he found the Lint, oh how magical. He found the Lint, I only have one testicle. He, he found, found the Lint. lint. And he's explaining it to somebody here. He says, Peter found a piece of Lint on his holy quest and his parents praised him for literally two and a half minutes while neglecting their other son Miguel, who actually found something, a ticket to the whore factory in a condom box. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's summarizing the plot very well. <laughs> so you have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, uh, our first movie, I Need to Lose 10 Pounds, yeah, which is there's somewhere a, over there. a fine Blu-ray, yeah, right here. Yep. Um, yeah, it, it's a it's a bat crazy movie. Yes. And, um, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I still yeah. like it. It's no cinematic masterpiece, but I still like it. That is Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Should we go over to Reddit? Yes, do Reddit. Jay Celsius said, Obelisk at local furniture store made me think of Jun, part of his psychic network attempting global domination. Mm. I don't get it. You like obelisks? Yes. yes. Maybe Is he that thinks that I am in control of all obelisks. It could be it's like some sort of Illuminati conspiracy. Ashen's Mac, and I don't. It's like Chipotle. Well, let's watch the video. Sure. It's long. 
Do you like macaroni? Do you like cheese? Do you like things in plastic pots? Well, have I got a treat for you. Craft macaroni and cheese dinner. Going to be honest with you here, guys. I don't think it counts as dinner. If I think what's really going on here yeah. is this is a famous YouTuber that has 1.3 million subscribers, yeah. and they talked about mac and cheese on an episode. I see. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know when mac and cheese is referenced. Thank you for making me feel a little bad because he has 391,000 views and those stuff only has 2,000. And he just has his hands in the screen. He's holding a macaroni and cheese. And I've never seen that variety. <laughs> no, we have not seen that variety. Yeah, I don't actually. know what it is yeah, at all. Yeah, it's like the shittiest video ever. <sighs> What's going on, EJ? I don't know. What are we going to have to do? What do we have to I do? I don't know. <laughs> we put babies in thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Because apparently making quality content every week. <laughs> Three not times not. every week sometimes. I thought we should throw a, a mention to the Benny's closed because yes. we, we never mentioned it. Uh, Benny's closed all 31 stores in, in regional New England. In the, yeah, every store. 93 year old retailer cites aging owners changing retail landscape. Yeah. Remember we talked about, we were like, you know, they really survived the whole like Walmart thing. Yeah. And then, Which was incredible. That was sent to us by Michael Abood, who's our, our Reddit uh, moderator. Yep. And he's like obsessed with retail. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's his big thing. Yep. Mum McKinley said, after moving to Cape Cod from North Carolina almost a year and a half now, I have come to rely on RC's New England retail store coverage as a means to become more familiar with the area and discover gems like Benny's. When I needed tires, I knew from Junt that Benny's was the place. Every Benny's has a permanent tire sale sign, so there's always a tire sale at Benny's. It's sad to hear the news of their closing, but thanks to RCE for giving me the knowledge and to experience the retail history of Benny's. Oh, so well, sometimes we're handy, that. sometimes people are into retail and we help them. Uh, here's Pab's Blue Ribbon Beer Macaroni and Cheese. Yeah, I would really be interested to try this, actually. It, it's a case of Pab's Blue Ribbon that comes with a bonus box of macaroni and cheese. Relative to my interests. Airjo McLaska went to the, the Mac and Cheese Fest in Arizona. Yep. So he was really excited to go, but then he comes back and he goes, I forgot about this post and realized I should give an update on how it went. It was terrible. Terrible. Oh. I bought my ticket in advance online and when I showed up, the giant line that went down and wrapped around the block was the line for people that bought tickets online. So I spent an hour waiting in line in 97 degree Arizona heat. But then I just wanted to sit down with a glass of water, so I walked along the stretch of little booths selling Mac until I find the water tent, only to discover they were out. I decided to go to the VIP area. I should mention that I spent $75 on the VIP ticket. Oh, yep. no. Which is supposed to give me access to the VIP lounge area and the VIP catch bar. The VIP area was one of those big pop-up tent shade things with a little podium that could make four or five drinks as a cash bar. I got a water, but by the time I finished it, they were basically out of any other drinks. Right. Sounds like a disaster. Mismanaged event. Yeah. Yep. And look, there's some Yelp reviews too. One and a half stars. And a half stars. This person's like, there's a lot wrong, but I really enjoyed the weather. Yeah, the day was nice. The day was nice. Irrelevant to the event. <laughs> well, hmm, the concept was good, but the event was short of a disaster. <laughs> wow, the Mac, Mac Daddy. Daddy. Well, I have AIDS, but other than that, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had AIDS, but other than that, it was pretty good. JD Carpenter again says, challenge accepted. He found a family-sized Kraft macaroni and cheese Never pot. seen that product. I said I wouldn't mind seeing that whole thing in a bowl. Yeah, just a big bowl. Personal <laughs> size. 2B? <laughs> it's just 2B. What's the ounceage, 14 on it? Yeah, 14.5. Yep. So I think that's easily conquerable by a human person. Sure. Well, it's a lot of food. Michael Abood, uh, when he, he left a comment on the MST3K episode. Yep. Amazing work, holy shit, two of my favorite things coming together. All, and this this I find really fascinating. Again, yeah. he's into retail. We did uh, our like shadow commentary thing, right? And there was a mac and cheese on Jimmy Kimmel for Kohl's mac and cheese. Yes. And we were like, Kohl's, like the like the clothing Kohl's? store? It's, Kohl's? Uh, Don't they sell clothes? One. This one, instead of Was it spelled photo. with an H? Uh-huh. Well, he says yes. It's the same Kohl's that sells clothing today. They originally started off as a grocery store chain. The final locations closed in 2003 under A&P. Fascinating. Yeah. That is interesting. An angry Kirby appreciation thread. Wow. You know, angry Kirby, like a, he's like this idiosyncratic sort of weird guy from yes. the internet. Yep. And we let him on the show, uh, uh, admittedly the first time because he had something of a following on request channel. Yeah. And I thought maybe we could get some fans over. <laughs> no. And he's like a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We enjoy having him when we do like yeah, our big events. things. Yeah. So this person said, I just want to say I love how Kirby went from being random internet suspected axe murderer to what seems to be a good friend with Frankie and Junt who appears in a lot of episodes of Box Man. Yeah. Uh, now, um, unfortunately, the person did spell my name with a Y. I've never met a Frankie with a Y. Hmm. I don't know this hmm. thing. Well, it is, it's not your actual name anyway. So. We are talking to Mr. Francis Charles Frank. I mean, Okari says, he quickly became one of my favorite guest hosts. Dude comes up with some pretty good banter. I hope he makes another appearance in this year's holiday special. Hmm. He, is, he is pretty funny, actually. Yeah, he's got uh, some I'm good gonna, quips. You know, I'm gonna give it to him. And then uh, somebody named Angry Kirby says, I think he sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clint says, 
noodles and cheese toasty, nah, I'm all right. Yeah, I agree with you. Nah, I'm all right. And it's like, what is it? It's like ramen cheese noodles in a it's, grill? It, yeah, it looks like ramen noodles with cheese so this, instead of grill. this whole thing with like using mac and cheese as a pizza topping, as uh, filling up a sandwich, no, it, it's just not. Just don't do Put it in a bread bowl, no, none of no, that stuff. No, no, no. Just of that stuff. mac in the bowl, mac, mac in, in the bowl, bowl. <laughs> mac in the bowl. Like, can I know, like, mac and cheese is not a sauce. Yeah, yeah. It's not any topping. No. Yeah. Clint comes back with another post. Pumpkin pizza mac served in a pumpkin. Next Halloween, perhaps? You know, I'm really, I, originally my plan had been to serve the pumpkin mac in pumpkins, and I'm so glad I didn't. Somebody said it's the perfect union of pirate pizza review and box mac. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's mac and cheese pizza in a pumpkin. That's yeah. true. I mean, it's just stupid and stupid. Is, and stupid. Yeah, stupid plus stupid equals stupid, stupid. Pepperoni has no place in Max's Quiao. Well, I agree. Yeah. yeah. For Nina, a vegan jalapeno mac and cheese is from Smack That Isaiah. Tons of breadcrumbs on top, by the way. Not possible. It is. 1.9 million subscribers. One point. 163.8 thousand views. How? How? I mean, if we had thick English accents, maybe we'd be there by now. Yeah, if we were like just bland enough and had an accent. Plus they're, you know, one's kind of cute, sort in a nerdy way. One's kind of, you know. Something else. Something else. You can milk so many nuts. This is beautiful, but they do need. Don't laugh at their banter, laugh at our banter. <laughs> You have to be bitter and resentful for everyone who's more successful than us. That's how it is. I like their kitchen. Yeah, I do too, actually. I yeah, admit it. that's pretty nice. I'm going to subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to subscribe and watch. Uh, this was a cool, a cool piece of information. Uh, some people might know I had a, a long, arduous affair with Troma Entertainment mm. uh, for distributing the, our first movie, I Need to Zim Pounds, already referenced in this episode. Yeah. And um, they actually launched a year or two ago their own kind of on-demand streaming platform called yep. Troma Now. And 10 pounds for all this time, they acquired it for like 20 years back in 2006. It's now in the Troma Now library. And so if you went to Troma Now, you can check it out and somebody noticed it. Digital Alertery says, while browsing through Troma Now's library, I noticed 10 pounds was available. I was curious if Frankie was aware. Uh, yeah, I was, and uh, I actually, it was my doing. I emailed Troma uh, and said, why don't, you can at least put it on there, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Literally the next day it was on there. From J.D. Carpenter, happy Thanksgiving, we made the homestyle mac for dinner. So th this is, these are those fans who actually tried the recipe. Yeah, out. and how did they say it came out? Did they give any comment? It's the one from the website. The only difference we saw was the online version called for heavy cream instead of evaporated milk, but good God, we were doing spoonfuls of the extra cheese sauce. Yeah, yeah, it's very cheesy. It's a nice uh, dish. Looks it's nice, interesting yeah, dish. very nice. I do think, I don't know, that doesn't look as good as what came out for us. We're, we're, we're trying to be nice for the fans. I don't know, it's got some bubbly cheese. Yeah, I mean, nice. I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy that. Back when we went to the Emerald Square Mall for Black Friday, which yep. I, I was re-watching this the other day. That's a good episode. It is? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's solid. It's Michael Abood, he comes through again. Remember we had, we were like, what's going on? There's two Macy's in, yeah. this, in this mall. Yep. There's one that's three floors, and there's one that's two floors. That's right. There are two Macy's here. There are two Macy's in the Emerald Square Mall. <laughs> one is dedicated specifically to men, I guess. Three floors of product just for men. Maybe these are Martha Stewart products for men. <laughs> and, you know, mattresses for men. Yes. Right, and, and couches. And patio furniture is for men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused again. Is this store only two floors? Are we the third floor of the mall? <laughs> Well, he explains. My theory on why there's two Macy's locations is that one started as a Macy's and the other started as a separate chain owned by Macy's. The Wikipedia page for the mall is vague, but it looks like it was originally a G Fox location, which was converted to Filene's, which finally dropped the name in 05, becoming Macy's. We had yep. this happen at a few malls in Houston where Macy's and Foley's operated side by side. One of them to this day operates under the same scheme while the largest mall in town just kept both as normal Macy's locations. Yeah. And I said, you know what you need? A podcast with John. Yeah, yeah. I We're know. Like, Talking about retail. Detail, like with a little bit of research. That'd and be he real. said, hey, if he ever wants to do that, I'd be down. Yeah. So if you ever wanted, even just as like a stream, even just as like with computer mics, yep. just audio only. It'd be fun. You 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 hook up with Michael Abood and yeah. see, because I think that could be fun. It could be. That was also, of course, everybody was pissed off at our bad experience with Best Buy. Yeah. Where they made us oh. go around the store uh. and all that. So where's the line? <laughs> what? I'm not following any arrows. Excuse me? Where do I need to go to check you out? You have to follow you gotta, the blue I'll line. I'll follow the arrows. I'm not going to follow you the You have to follow the blue line. Or else they'll send you fast. One fan tweeted Best Buy yep. and was like, this is why. This is why you're failing. 
<laughs> Clint again says, delicious looking, in quotes. Mac and cheese loaf, would you guys <laughs> consider trying it? Oh. And it's it just looks disgusting. It looks like the EJ, worst. EJ, it's browned in it's vegetable oil. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> that means. <laughs> T. Laura975 says, Junt's cart shopping suggestion. The biggest excitement I've had for a store this year is HomeSense. I'd love to see you guys pal around and give your opinions on the store. So is sense? that like a home goods or is it? Home of your next discovery. Hmm. US.homesense.com. Where's the nearest location? You got Brain your Braintree, Tree? you got your Framingham, you got your Westwood. What exactly do they sell? Oh, it's a TJ Maxx brand. Okay. Yeah. I'll well, so I, I would check it out. Yeah, that'd be fun. That one would be good to do. And there's a store called Ollie's I want to do, but they're both kind of long drives. HomeSense, which is a more fixture and larger decor centric home goods, same TJ Maxx Corporation, is a pretty amazing store. However, I feel Junt might find the prices high, even though they are very reasonable for what they are, i.e., lamps for $40 to $100, dining chairs for $130 to $200 each. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Uh, Special two plums for one. Was searching some kind of YouTube app for Box Mac after, and, and the, the autocomplete <laughs> includes birth. Af Box Mac after birth. And Box Mac <laughs> and after, after birth, birth plus, plus <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> or actually, that's the add on pack. It's like yeah. you buy it and it already has the all DLC. the DLC yeah. included. EJ had commented Box Mac after birth is what happens after a long day of shooting. <laughs> oh, I don't even remember saying that. This is pretty funny. <laughs> Airjo McLaska says a jump from another world trying to break through. <laughs> Um, a terrifying new way to cook mac and cheese. Uh, this was posted by Bossett. And, uh, oh, this I is, saw this thing, yeah. Oh, so this is only two minutes and 14. Pasta on the stove, you boil, stir and toil, and watch out, it's sure to make a mess. Then you strain. Oh, that pasta is gone. Making pasta's not a chore anymore. Hi, Chef Tony with pasta. You can tell he's a chef. Just like John. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So what is it? Oh, I remember seeing this. Yeah. I, I'm interested in maybe doing this. It's not possible that it's gonna be good. In like seconds? His unique vertical design surrounds the pasta and uses thermal control to maintain- No, there's no control. It's just a container that you pour boiling water in. Fafali, rigatoni, ravioli. I don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> Don't buy it. All right, well, it's dumb then, but I, I still think that could be a fun show. Yeah. Sh uh, yeah. Uh, this is shared by Rugsy. There's so much inappropriate noodle-related content on YouTube nowadays, so I keep my family clean and pure with Red Cow Entertainment. Um, I don't know what this is. Let's take a look. Sure. Hi there. This is Jeff from jeffmobile.com. Today, I'm going to be making some craft dinner. Okay. So, his nose is flaring out so hard. Hey, this is Jeff from the... So, here we go. Craft dinner from the package. But he has 107,000... How does this have 107,000 views? So what does he do? Just put, like, water in it? I think it's just a guy making mac and cheese. And it is KD, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I think I think craft dinner somehow gets more. It definitely does. Search, searching. The Canadians are just so obsessed. They have to be watching videos about KD. Maybe we should like rebrand the whole show, like with like lots of Canadian stuff, and like just like KD, KD, KD. KD. Yeah. We could dress up like Mounties, get you a Mountie costume. Oh sure, why not? This is this video is still going on. <laughs> Could you fast forward through and see how he makes the darn thing without butter and milk? I don't really have any milk right now in the house, so I'm just going to be uh, stirring in the sauce mixture. I just do it anyway. You can do is if you like uh, frozen peas. Oh, he's got a Canadian accent. Frozen That's what it is. Yeah, so if you like put in your frozen peas here. <laughs> You're going to like undo all the Canadian goodwill we've had. Made by JeffMobile.com. Mm. JeffMobile.com. JeffMobile.com. JeffMobile. JeffMobile. My mobile cell phone. And then he puts ketchup on it at the very end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> Qui-Gon Jeff commented, it's an abomination that this video has 86,000 views. So and, it, it and gained 86,000 as of seven months ago, and now it has 100 and... And J.D. Carpenter said, I cringed when he added the water. <laughs> so, did, so did we. Does anybody remember this yeah. delicious, sadly discontinued... So match? I was actually... I, talk, I think oh, I mentioned this briefly on the episode we did with uh, the Canadian KD Alfredo. I do remember this Mac and it was really good. It was part of the premium brand along with three cheese and extra creamy. Qui-Gon Jeff said, I remember always being very fond of it because it didn't taste like Alfredo, but it was more unique and cheesy. Mm. Maybe that's just nostalgia talking. There must have been a reason that demand for it wasn't high enough to maintain production, right? Uh, right? Right? I right? know. I What's Junt's new car? Asks Priceless Persuader. And we actually made a video. We did make a little video on it. It's a Buick LaCrosse 2015. I needed a car and I wanted a full-size car and it has the best reviews for reliability. That's what I came down to. You like it so far? I do, I do. It's got a couple little quirks in the software department that could use a little improvement, but I'll get used to it. You happy about what you paid? Yeah. yeah. Did you get it from the dealership? I did, I got it from my dealership. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, there you go. Beautiful there you cross. go, Reddit. There you Enjoy. go. What's in Junt's car? What's in my car? Not much yet. It's still pretty clean. <laughs> that was like only like a couple weeks into having the car. Yeah. Now you've had it for a few months. Yep. Uh, anything to add? Uh, same basic sentiment. I still oh. like the car. The software could use a little work. Is it weird to see video of yourself that you don't remember and you're like, yeah, I agree with that guy. I mean, I remember <laughs> that. But uh, that has happened. So on the uh, on the 100th episode of Box Mac, this was in reference to when I was making the Mac, your yeah. Mac. Uh, I don't need a lifeline. I know how to make a mac and cheese. And posted a, an image of a laptop with uh, covered in Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese all over it. Yep. Yeah, because this is like the level of incompetency I, I demonstrate. <laughs> <No. laughs> the cheese ended up on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's a mac and cheese. <laughs> Somebody also said I cringed when Frankie added that extra flour to the bechamel. Glad it turned out well. Happy hundred. It came episodes. out delicious. Uh, a beautiful box mac Christmas card. This is sent by Smack That Isaiah. Hope everyone had a macky Christmas. It's cute. I like yeah. it. I like the, the baby noodle. My girlfriend made this fantastic box Mac Christmas card for me. Tis the cheese on to be noodly. <laughs> Mackie Christmas, Fred Kelker. So cute. The three wise men bringing Franken, Salt, Merlk, and Kerrygold. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's really that's, good. That's kind of funny. Sent in by Grilled Pepsi. I mean, who doesn't need this? It's a must have. It's an image of like a little pouch in your boxers, your boxer briefs that you can stick macaroni and cheese into. Yeah. It says secret pocket just for mac and cheese. So on, on the episode of Scavenger Gen where we found a, a VHS tape. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed because it's not like it went up on YouTube or anything. It couldn't. It got flagged by YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, but uh, on the website, I actually fully digitized. Yeah, you did. I put it on Daily Motion, where they don't care about these things. Yeah. I titled it the same thing that was on the label of the yeah. game. It was N143, 145, 146. <laughs> Complete with commercials and this kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody's like re really blown out and airbrushed. Pan Pantene Pro V in Japan. Yeah. So uh, if you want to check out. <laughs> John's tape. <laughs> John's tape that we found. John's tape. We went on a road trip one time. We went to a mac and cheese festival. That was a lot of fun. That was one of my favorite episodes. Just called me Dutch91 said, my reaction when I first saw this popped up in my subscription. That's pretty funny what he does. Check it out. Right? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Will Smith. WPM says, another old ass recipe for Mac. Just called me Dutch91 said, my God, that looks amazing. People are interested in us trying this. Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm John Townsend, and we're doing a wonderful- Admittedly, yeah, you know, we crap on a lot of YouTube channels. This guy has kind of a cool YouTube channel. I, I, yeah, I, I cool. like the concept. It's yeah. a high concept. Like, it's not just like, oh, I'm looking at a box, and these are my hands. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's a concept. So do you remember what the concept was? Like, I what, mean, it's very, very simple. What set it apart from standard? There's no bechamel. There's nothing like that. It's just milk and cheese and butter. Go like in 1784. Down. They would have had these ingredients and they could have made this? Yes. Yeah. Though cheese, I think, wouldn't have been... I don't know how common cheese would have been. Oh, he's, he's using, like, the measurements, too. These guys are cool. I would like to collaborate, please. It's it's like going to Plymouth Plantation yeah. or Sturbridge, yeah. Village. Sturbridge Village or... Uh, get this. So there, there's a pretty popular YouTuber, Emmy Made in Japan, mm -hmm. and she did the Mac and Cheese Nation thing. And, you know, she's got 1.1 million subscribers, this video got 250,000 views. I heard she's in Rhode Island. Really? I tweeted her yep. to be like, let's talk. <laughs> and uh, she didn't tweet me back. If you're a famous YouTuber, maybe you'll be our meal ticket. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that like this is a crappy video, but I guarantee you, me, John, and Angry Kirby burning the place down but we is also, definitely a better video. <laughs> we also aren't attractive Japanese women, so. Well, you're pretty close. <laughs> we have got an anime picture to prove it. 81% organic gr ingredients. <laughs> yeah, this is such bull crap. It's sent in by a Fully Rec. It's KD that says 81% organic ingredients. Well, because they have to be very specific about that, because if you're going to say it's 100% organic, it has to be 100% organic. 19% pleased. With <laughs> 19%. Good joke, John, in the past. Good joke, yeah, past John. This is from Liquid Ate the Assets. The elusive red cow creamer spotted at Walmart. Yeah. I couldn't believe they actually saw it in a store. I like how that's the uh, icon of the clips and yes, uh, pods. Yes, that's how you know. I like it a lot. That you're on that channel. It's almost like off-brand or something. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's the Walmart version. <laughs> yeah. of. This is from Honey Buns Beyonce. Frankie's favorite recipe. They're being sarcastic, of course. And it's Rachel Ray just dumping ingredients. <laughs> and screaming. And, yeah, okay. <laughs> you're going to put a little more! <laughs> but yeah, I think the idea is that she just keeps putting stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, like way after you should stop. In the description it says, Gruyere, bacon, and truffles take comfort food to another level. But then she also puts tomato yeah. into 
It becomes like some other casserole, then. I don't know. I mean, that looks really dense. Yeah. Way too much stuff in it. It's gonna taste like randomness. I'd try it because I'm not specifically anti any of the things that went in there. But <laughs> damn, that's a lot of stuff to pile into a mac and cheese. Yes. Moderator Michael again said, YouTube seems to be performing inquiries on Shake Jun. So I guess like sometimes YouTube, for the, for the sake of their algorithm, will ask you questions. And they asked of him about the shake junk. How does this video compare to other YouTube videos you watched this week? <laughs> and the options are one of the best videos, a great video, about average, a poor video, one of the worst. Don't remember, haven't watched it. Shake junk is probably one of my favorite videos. Really? Yeah, I don't really? know why. I don't know why. It, it, it just gets me, especially when the definition of shake junk, the music, <laughs> it gets me every time. And this is called the shake junk. This is the shake junk. <laughs> Uh, somebody commented, You're damn right. <laughs> I, I keep posting episodes on Reddit yeah. as <laughs> with the caption in case you thought it was National Barbecue Day. And the reason that makes me laugh is because, I don't know if you guys remember, on Memorial Day or whatever, they'd be like, in case you thought it was National Barbecue Day. And I was like, I'm going to post that about our, our puppet bag trash episode. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I got that joke. Pope John Paul... The second <laughs> what, I, it says, I know YouTube took down the videos, but is the bag database still up? I can't seem to find it. <laughs> <laughs> if you go on the actual comments of that episode, yeah. everybody is such a participant in the, the fiction of bag trash. We got, <laughs> we got good fans. Land of Always Winter says, another rue-based ZD Mac. Oh, it's binging with Babish. See, he uses one of these hot plates yeah. like we yeah. do. Yeah, it's a nice hot plate. Macaroni elbows like usual, but ZD. I mean, it's not like they were exercising restraint when they designed this sandwich. EJ watches this, dude. He sometimes. He's done actually something pretty smart is where he takes pop culture food stuff. Yeah. So he's combining food, He's combining That's pop smart. culture, and he, it's well shot. I mean, His SEO is through the roof. Just watch the latest episode of Binging with Babish. Not only does he make Mac in this episode, but he says that he burned his precious little fingers. I rest my case. There was like a moment, because the, the post was Oliver Babish is a box Mac fan, yeah. exclamation point, and, and EJ and I were both like, yes. And then, no. No, it was, it was just a vague reference to burning your hands, which is most likely coincidental. We're gonna burn our precious little fingers, ow. Watch your precious little hands. Thanks. If he had said burn your precious. Oh, yeah. Floral print shoes found more Dea varieties. Veggie, white cheddar, and Alfredo. Ben White asked, BoxMac RPG, with E3 having just wrapped up, I'm curious if there's any news on the BoxMac game. Is Keith slacking, or has the project been completely mm. abandoned? It's probably that one, the abandoned one. Yeah, the, the completely <laughs> abandoned. I mean, we kind of knew from the start, yeah. joked from the start. Uh, making a game of any kind is a huge undertaking, yeah. right? I do think he should release it as is, maybe, or whatever he's got, yeah. just release it, because it seemed like it was something. Notice. Fahrenheit Zero says, loving the Hawaii clips, because we did like a new Hawaii not too long yeah. ago, and I cut them up into clips and released them every day. Just yeah, I thought it was really great, actually. And so for those who aren't so inclined to click on a 45-minute video, yep. all of a sudden it was like, well, just this topic and just that topic. Yep. Like, mm. There was just a topic on LASIK eye surgery, and there was mm. just a topic on uh, a bus story that I had and yeah. that sort of thing. They were under five minutes, each one of them. I find that's a good way to consume the media. I mean, I do that with a lot of Me popular too. YouTubers. Yeah. They said, I just wanted to say I'm loving the new format of using short clips for the How Wowie podcast. I usually don't have the time to watch 50 plus minute podcasts and my attention span is that of a 12 year old. So these have been really fun for me. I think your special sauce, if you will, is the hilarious genuine banter between you all. Keep it up, cheers. There's always, you know, the studio is perfect for podcasts. Oh, yeah. so. Um, it, it would be nice to continue some of that. We did that long form interview with Chrissy. Yeah, which I thought was quite good. Which we really enjoyed and you know, not as much the fans. I mean, we got 320 views total. Yeah, I tried something new, got the natural light coming in, got mm -hmm. conversational. Ben White said, I hope it does get more popular. I love Box Mac as much, maybe more as the next guy, but I definitely watch a hundred more of these. The way it was shot seemed more mature than some of the other work you do. I don't mean that at all to diminish the other amazing high quality things you do. I just mean I really dug the angles and editing. And I know what he means. Yeah. You know, it's a different feel altogether. I yeah. don't think I cracked a joke the whole time. No, yeah, I think I, I was just talking about animation. Yeah, and uh, I, I agree that you're very good at interviews. I actually, I love uh, 
discount film school. That's why I probably wanted to do work with you in the first place because I was so interested in that series. Moving on to Facebook. Gerard White said, outrage. I hope the articulate, exquisite, and noble Frankie and Junk can set things straight. And he was sharing a comment from Gabriel Mahler yep. that says, people, macaroni and cheese is not good food. It will never be in the category of good food. It sometimes happens when you have kids or you're in college or something. That's it. You're wrong. Get out of here. Yeah, cheese, carbs, what's wrong? And Thomas so, Jefferson made it. It can't be bad. <laughs> It's bread and cheese, like what's the matter with you? James Burgermeister says, garbage post alert. If you had to get rid of one of these, which would you choose? Grilled cheese, mac and cheese, nachos, cheese fries, mozzarella sticks, or cheesy bread? Cheesy bread. I said I'd do away with cheese fries because presumably you keep on cheese fries. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. It's, so the yeah. least amount of damage, damage is done. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I rarely order them with cheese. Yeah. It's like loaded fries. I'm like, no thanks. Yeah, it never holds up well. Or you have to eat five at once. Yeah, you get a big clump. Michael Buchan says, RIP Australian Kraft Max, for now anyway, all getting replaced by the brand of its new owner, Biga, after they lost the license to use the Kraft brand at the end of 2017, which we learned was the case in that unboxing. Somebody ended up sending us this. Yeah. Oh. This whole and we, we will see that presentation on uh, on BoxMac at some point. Laura Caltori has shared, look what showed up today, hashtag BoxMac with Joe Collins. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they ordered the volume Very four. Very cool. With Zach's mug on it. In a Fan of Johnny Cash. I fell in. You had a very cute video with your kid. <laughs> I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. Good job, Gavy. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, down, down. And it burns, burns, burns The ring of Quiet The ring of Quiet 